1970 Ford Interceptor Police Car by AMT Ertl. Coming up next. One out of 12, one out of 12. Be on the alert for a model kit hobby shop dude on YouTube holding a police interceptor patrol car from the 1970s. 1970, in fact. Well, here we go again, model car fans and police car fans all over the world. We are going to be taking a look at another one of these great police cars right here on our channel. This great car has been offered many times in the past, so we could take a look at some of these old box arts. But before we do that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell because there's so many of these model kits coming up in the future that you won't want to miss out. So if you pound the bell, YouTube will let you know when and where that video is and you could be the first one to actually see it. So without further delay, because nobody wants delay, let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. Breaker 120, Breaker 120, we are in hot pursuit of a 1970 Plymouth Pro Street Superbird over. Car 83, what's your 20? Over. Breaker 17, Breaker 17, our 20 is at the table of Monster Hobbies, where we're going to open up the lid of this Ford Interceptor Police Cruiser. Now, this thing is a special model. It came out a little earlier than the most recent version of this kit. This one is, of course, a special done with Stevens International, which is one of the Monster Hobbies wholesalers, by the way. So if you ever need anything from me for, from Stevens, don't hesitate to ask. I will try to my best to find what you need. So if we flip up this box here, we can see the groovy pieces that come in this kit, which, of course, is our authentic police car equipment the roof-mounted siren and flasher unit, the handheld spotlight, optional push bar, fire extinguisher, communications equipment, right up for 1970. There's our antennas, large and small, spotlights, authentic wheels with the dog dish hubcaps, and we have the 429 Ford Boss Interceptor engine, which is there as well as this amazing shotgun, just to slow down the crazy folks out there. <laughs> okay, and there's the end of our box. And then here we have the action team, and this is where I find out this kit came out in 2005 by RC Brands Incorporated. Now check out this amazing ride. There you go. Okay, so let's tear off the lid of this great kit and check out our police interceptor. Okay, so here we go, removing the lid. Woo! There's some awesome police decals, which I do believe this is in the latest edition. Okay, and then there's our instruction sheet. This amazing artwork here, done by Kirk Barron. Amazing work. Chrome in the bag, as well as our police pursuit body, and there's our clear glass as well, just tucked into the car, and then all our white components, and we've got our tires and our siren lights in blue and red, and then what's here? Ah, metal axles and screws. So let me clear the debris out of here, and then we'll take a look at those components. Hello everybody, thank you very much for watching this video today. If you want to get some great deals on model kits, don't forget to visit our website www.monster-hobbies.ca and enter in this password here in order to get 10% off on your next purchase. You can use this password in the shopping cart at the checkout. Thanks again, and please enjoy the rest of this video. And here we've got our latest rag on the police car. These, of course, are the instruction sheets. And as you can see, we got that great drawing of our 
squad car in action going down the streets of Chicago or wherever they're going. <laughs> okay, so this is a big fold out, just like a Mad Magazine. And there's the important stuff we need to know, as well as a parts layout, which is good. I think all instruction sheets should have these, or at least under the box, like the new round two kits do. And then here we've got our engine going on. This should be a quick review of the instructions, I do believe. There's our interior and body, and then the final assemblies. So let's take a look at these panels in closer detail. Now the first panel we want to investigate, of course, is our engine, because we're going to need as much speed as we can to catch all these crazy teenagers out there and hippies. So we have our engine block in two pieces going together with our standard transmission, as well as the intake manifold, carburetor, and air cleaner, our coil, our front cover, an oil pan, and an oil filter. There's our cylinder heads, of course there's going to be two of those. And then our amazing valve covers sitting on here with our breather tubes, the exhaust manifolds, our fan and pulleys, the starter is going on there, and then we got our water hose and distributor. So that should be enough to catch these perpetrators. Next up we have our chassis, because where would we be if we couldn't put the power to the tires? And of course there's our front axle, which goes through and probably goes underneath the oil pan the exhaust system and then our metal axles and tires and wheels in the back as well as our hubcaps here and inside we have our office here our interior with a handheld spotlight the weapon lock on our rifle here there's our instrument panel so we know how fast we're going and how fast the perpetrator is going our steering wheel and of course our radio base radio receiver the radio transmitter and the speaker and our hand mic so that we can radio back into the station and give them our 20. There's our seat back and front and our fire extinguisher just in case it gets a little too hot. The only thing I might recommend in here of course is the safety screen just in case we gotta put a guy in the back. And next up we got the body of this great kit with our radiator going in here to our radiator support which is molded into our four-door body. There's our windows and a little side inside mirror here for the rear view. A firewall to keep us cold from the engine and then our assembled interior will pop up in there. Here's our final assemblies with our rear bumper popping up into the body and we've got two red taillights that'll pop in there and there. Then we've got our hood dropping down to cover that big mill, as well as the battery, the front bumper and grill, and our push bar going in here with our antennas. And then we've got our spotlights and side view mirrors, as well as a large antenna for our CB radio, two light brace mounts, a cross light bar, our siren in the center, and then our flashers up top, and our two blue or red base flashers and the flasher base. All of this will be screwed onto the chassis and then we're ready to roll. Now that we got the skinny on our instruction sheet, it's time to blow this taco stand and get on the road. And here's our body of our 1970 Ford Galaxy 500. As you can see it's got the correct four doors for police pursuit work and for putting the perps in the back. There are some pieces you have to remove here, of course, to make it look correct. Again, we've got the vent here, so well, I guess only GM had the hood going up and covering the vent back in the day. And then there's our radiator support wall here going across. And as you can see underneath, this is very much a promotional screw together kit, so you could use it for slot cars as well on 25th scale. And there's some pins for lining up your interior. So Overall, not too bad. There are some mold marks under here, which of course you'll have to get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade, just to smooth out your ride. And if you look on the back here, you'll also see that nice little Galaxy script up in there. But overall, I think it's pretty good for the job that needs to be done. And here's all the white plastic components that you will find in this model kit. And again, we have this crazy steering wheel in a bag. And this is like a round two signature. I don't know why they do that. 
I mean, maybe the steering wheel is supposed to go on here or something and just stay there. But no, we got to clip it out and stick it in a bag. So if you worked for RC2 back in this time period, please, in the instructions or the comments down below, let us know why this is a thing. Why is this a thing? Okay, anyway, let's look, take a look at the white parts. I'll put away the offending steering wheel. We shall never look at it in this video again. <laughs> no, anyway. Okay, here's our chassis molded as one big pan. And this is very thick plastic on here, too. Like, can you dig it? You know? Okay, so we've got some pretty thick plastic there. There's our interior. Our dashboard, which looks very much like the same dashboard in the 69 Ford Galaxy hardtop, also reviewed on this channel. I'll leave the link up in here, and you can click there and check it out. Or maybe I'll put it at the end of the video. How about that? Link up our Galaxy. <laughs> okay, and there's that front um, push bar bumper thing. There's our firewall, all our radio components and police bits, as well as our wheels, and there's some pretty deep deep rods on those wheels and there's our big Ford engine right there as well as our front bench seats and our exhausts as well as our hood and the seat back so let's just move these a little bit and we'll pull them up into the camera and see what they look like see what the down low is on these parts I'm just gonna bring these up real quick there you go, distributor and the front engine cover, water pump. Okay, here's that dashboard. And let's move our interior out of here, as well as our chassis. So if you see the dashboard here, it's got that same sort of U-shape in here, where you can read all your gauges. And apparently this was quite a nice dashboard set up back in the day. Uh, people said they could really read it easily. And then we've got our glove box in here, and nice vents. Now, this, of course, is a very nicely molded piece. No sink marks that I can see. A little bit of flash, maybe, but that's about it. So we'll just move that to the side. What else do I have for you? Oh, here's our big Ford engine. It's, I think it's a 428 or 429. Oh, yeah, there it is. There's our indentation for that front axle to go through little skinny battery holy smokes <laughs> all right and there's our exhaust manifolds and the fan which has let's see one two three four five six seven blades on it our carburetor sitting there ah, not too bad detail there on the transmission looks pretty good the old interceptor package okay here's the wheels it does look like there's a sink mark there but maybe the cross member will cover it there's for our uh, flashing lights and look at those wheels there now how do you know which one is your front wheels and which one is your back well there's the little cap for our bearings which is only in the front in the back of course this will bolt up to your differential so the differential goes flat on there there's no little caps and that's our radiator real tiny again with the fan shroud built in a couple of mold marks in here I can't really catch them too well on the white plastic but they're there and you have to scrape them with your number 16 hobby blade you can see how deep these are in the back Whew. crazy okay and then there's our firewall there and that front wooden bumper there's our shotgun and our radio components let's turn this over here maybe no nope, nothing really more to see scrape those off the big buttons not these little tab bits here, but the buttons. I don't know, looks decent for what it needs to be doing. There's our exhaust pipes and our differential. And there's our bench seat, which looks pretty accurate for an old Ford police car. Okay, and then there's our back seat. And now you can really see the, the bucket is really softly molded in here along the sides there are no pedals haha <laughs> how are you gonna drive this thing <laughs> well anyway at least you won't have to worry about them being wrong um, there's some mold marks up here on the back of the package shelf which will have to be sanded down use your cross sanding technique for that one 
Okay, let's take a look at this big, thick, monstrous chassis. It's very basic. It's almost like a promotional. Maybe some of you guys know if this car was a just regular promotional four-door Ford back in 1970. Anyway, I'll, I'm sure to find it out later on. But yeah, this thing's like thicker than a Johan promo underneath here. Wow, and then there's the holes for your screws to go in. Be nice to screw it together and then uh, putty over top of this, or, or uh, actually a piece of evergreen rod down here, and glued in place right over those screw heads, and then filled in. But anyway, there's our fuel tank sitting there, and our trunk. Okay, and then there's our Ford hood. I was thinking there might have been some script along here, but there's nothing. And our bench seat back. Not even a mat under here. Well, this is basic to the to the max. <laughs> okay, so we got to get rid of those. Our little mold marks. And then, well, that's pretty much all our white pieces there. So let's let's just re-space this in our frame. I know this isn't going to be quite the same. Okay, goes on and the beat goes on, all right, and then our little steering wheel in the bag and our two little loose distributor and front engine beat. And now for the groovy chrome and here we've got our grill and our uh, cylinder heads for our Boss 429. Yeah, I looked on the side of the box in between takes here. <laughs> All right, I kind of forgot earlier, but yeah, that's what we got. Our Ford Dog Dish hubcaps, our rear bumper, and then all these cool little components in here, all chromed up. We've got our radio and our CBN uh, speaker sitting in here. Microphone, actually. And then the little flasher domes and all kinds of cool police stuff. Now let's take a look at that Ford grill and a little black wash in there would bring it all out. Headlights are molded in place so you don't have to worry about uh, getting those at a 45 degree angle on the cross hatches. You can actually make out the Ford emblem right across the top there. Very tiny letters. Then of course the one in the back here between the two tail lights. All looks good. There's our great big 429 cylinder heads. And then on the back, of course, there's a couple of mold marks, but this basically goes together like the old 1960 Johan Plymouth Police um, Wagon, which I reviewed earlier, thanks to my friend John. And uh, there's a big, long CB radio. These cars will look good together, sort of like uh, the 60 Plymouth is the earlier one, and then the 70 is, of course, 10 years later. And here we have our glass. And, of course, you can see this is, again, that promo style. So you've got the long runners going from the front windshield to the back and then the little peg in here so that you can line it all up. Now you could always saw these off and then get rid of the runners so that uh, when you flip your squad car over you won't see it in there. <laughs> and then there's our flasher lights, red and blue, and our rear tail lamps as well as these red little flashers here. So the detail on this is quite nice, actually. There isn't too much. Most parts are smooth. But there is detail in those tail lamps, as you can see here and here. Sort of like a long pattern. There's little pins on the back so you can push them in and align it easily. Pretty much a snap together. Now I did have a thought here. Remember I said that uh, this car would look nice with the 60 Plymouth Wagon from Johan that I reviewed earlier? Well, that Plymouth police wagon doesn't have any of the radio bits. So what you could do is buy another one of these kits and build it as a regular stock Ford uh, Galaxy 500 four-door family car. And then save all the police bits and put them into that seven, uh, 60 Plymouth wagon. Because the wagon is missing the radio and all the interior components and that would basically square it all up. Here we have our Firestone Supreme tires, and I've got to ask you a question right here and right now, so lay it on me. Who is more groovier, Diana Ross in the Supremes 
or the Firestone Supreme tires? Let me know in the comments down below, and I will dig that jive later. Anyway, I'm not opening this bag, much as the steering wheel, because I don't want to lose the two chrome-plated axles or these body mount screws. So anyway, this is what we get, and these Firestone Supremes are actually kind of nice. They've got that nice tread pattern on them, as well as the little pie crust edges on them. So again, you could paint some white walls, but most police cruisers are running on, of course, government-sponsored tires, so there isn't going to be too much fancy smanchy going on. And here's our decal sheet for our squad car, with car number 83 up in the top here for all four corners, as well as radar and police. And there's our American flag sitting there, as well as the police department emblem for the state city of Troy in Michigan. And there's our government-sponsored license plate of 58740. Now, the only thing that I would like to see in these police car kits are, of course, the Canadian version with the RCMP logo and the Canadian flag and everything else that uh, made up our Canadian police force north of the border up here. But hey, what can you do except find them on the internets, which are brand new. We got to wait another ooh, 20, 30 years for that to happen. But anyway, <laughs> because this is 1970, of course. So that's our decal sheet. And that completes our investigation of the Ford Interceptor police car, made exclusively for Stevens International back in 2005 from AMT Ertl. And if you have built this amazing police cruiser for your own police force, don't forget to share your pictures of it with us on our Facebook page in the links down in the comment section below. And if you had any problems putting it together or know of some neat tricks for it, Please let us know in the comments section, also if you've built it as some other police car from some other force. So, Detective Kojak, now we must sign off. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that amazing review of our 1970 Ford Police Interceptor Police Car by AMT Ertl. Man, wasn't that thing amazing? I just love building all these old police cars and everything. I just want RCMP decals, because I'm in Canada, eh? <laughs> Anyway, next week there'll be some more model car videos coming out. If you want to check out all our latest model cars, go and visit me at www.monster-hobbies.ca. Look in our model car section and see what you like and let me know. Anyway, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, everybody, stay safe.